Ladies and gentlemen, the world's on fire and the MFers don't care. Well, one part's on fire and the other part, it's underwater. You know, the extreme weather patterns that seem to be full-blown in this grand solar minimum. <coughs> Isn't it bizarre how extreme the weather has become over the past 20 years? Especially over the past 15 years? Seems like when the sprain really picked up, so did the extreme weather. How bizarre. I mean, a conspiracy theorist in a garage in Southern Colorado can see this, and doctors and scientists with multiple degrees can't. Or maybe they do and they don't care. Or maybe they do and they do care, and maybe they're going to do something about it. Now, I want to let you know real quick that this podcast is brought to you in part by Noble Gold Investments. You have an amazing opportunity right now to turn your 401 or IRA into precious metals. Do you want to turn those stocks into gold? Well, it's really easy. And you can get free material right now. If you look at the stock market and these huge swings in the stock market, especially some of these tech stocks, and if you want to have something a little bit more stable, something that's been around a lot longer than stocks, gold, precious metals, great opportunities right now. Noble Gold Investments. Click the links and read the free books that they're giving League Project listeners how inflation is used to keep you in the rat race. All right. Now, let me share with you the maps. Check this out also. Will you just look at it? The biggest ever earthquakes recorded on the North Slope yesterday, a 6.4 and a 6.0. Well, today, there has been several earthquakes in that region also, in the four-point-something range. Oh, yeah. Now, look at this, will you? This is the event summary, the emergency maps, rsoe.hu, h-i-s-z.rsoe.hu. I'll leave the link in the video description box. The world's on fire. California certainly is. And this is catastrophic, folks. They just... Lowered the actual damage level to great, so it's great, not catastrophic anymore. But say that to the people that have lost land and been sucking in that smoke out there. Nasty stuff indeed. I want to share with you just the most current emergencies. Just a few of them. Look at this. Extreme weather, India. Climate change, yeah. Geoengineering, terraforming. Scorched earth, scorched earth, scorched earth, five of five, global events, that's catastrophic level, catastrophic. Forest fires in California, the biggest in state history, four of five, four of five. And then you've got tons of short-term events also. Quakes in the Northern Slope. Didn't Casey, Edgar Casey, predict that there was, there was gonna be a lot of signs of the times in New York, not New York, Alaska. Why did I say New York? Or did I just have a, Harp on, or was that some type of psychic intuition there? Hmm, interesting, interesting. Watch out if you're in New York. I think I just got a download. Be careful. So, Zorg's in a better mood today. You can see Zorg's happy. Um, he, he's enjoying the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, the Rocky Mountain High here in Colorado. And he's also enjoying the fact that I, I let him use the, the gas mask, you know, because he didn't know it was going to fit his head, but it fits, so it's cool. And, and also, I wanna talk about the global events that are going on right now with this extreme weather. Whether you're underwater, whether it's flooding, it's like the East Coast is flooding like crazy and the West Coast is drying up like crazy. Now, combined with all the aluminum and barium and particulates that are being sprayed in the atmosphere to seed the clouds and whoever, whoever who knows whatever else they're doing, nanny, 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 does the aluminum and the barium and these chemicals and particulates help with the forest fires, these extreme forest fires, and the droughts? Um, I remember going back maybe 10, 12 years, it seems like that's when the East Coast really started getting colder and a lot of flooding, major snowpack, and then now the West Coast is suffering. It's as if the MFers are, I don't know, maybe helping orchestrate extreme weather to where then maybe they can get people out of those areas. I mean, hey, what do I know? Get people, like Agenda 21 stuff, right? Get people out of certain areas 
so that they can then sell that land for pennies on the dollar. Somebody left a comment that, and I, I can't validate this comment, so I don't know how accurate it is, but somebody was saying that they are in an area, in a ranch that got nailed with forest fires. They had to leave, and then FEMA came in and bought up a bunch of land for pennies on the dollar. But does FEMA buy land? So I don't even know if FEMA can buy land. So like I said, I can't confirm that. What I can confirm though, is when I go to, I also want to share this with you because I did a, uh, a podcast the other day saying, hey, we're in dire straits here, folks. This is a catastrophic event on a global scale. Climate change. And people were just ripping into me. They're like, oh, you're a fear monger, man. You're reading an article from a bank, dude. Do you know what HSBC's linked to? Oh my goodness. I get it. I get it. Let's take that out of the equation and let's talk to people from around the world. Let's look at the pictures that I've shared with you here in the Four Corners region, Southern Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, of dying trees at alarming levels. People have been leaving their feedback from around the world. Canada, BC, Washington. It's interesting how much of it's along the coast here of mass tree die-offs, droughts, crops not growing properly. And then on the East Coast, they're getting blasted with Floods, they're getting plenty of rain, plenty of water. It's the total opposite on the East Coast. How bizarre that it wasn't like this 20 years ago as much. I mean, yeah, you had some extreme weather. Of course you did. You're always going to have extreme weather. But like this, and then you read the reports that come out about controlling the weather, controlling the skies. It's all connected. You control the weather. You can help control the stock market. You can control sporting events. You can control crop growth. You can control countries' growth based upon how much water they're getting or not getting, or how much, you know, in Colorado Springs recently, there was um, several animals and men that died because they got hit with these pieces of hail that were the size of softballs. Several people were injured, a lot of property damage. Can you imagine if that's the norm? All of a sudden, alert, alert. You've got softball sized pieces of hail, of ice falling from the skies. Oh yeah. Going back 10, 12, 15 years approximately, and there are these tornadoes going on, these crazy tornadoes. And combined with the tornadoes, there was this mold, and a bunch of people died, and it was in the Midwest somewhere. I don't, was it, I don't know if I remember it was Oklahoma or where, but I was thinking to myself, my gut was telling me, this is some type of, and once again, I'm a conspiracy theorist, this is all my opinion. It seemed to me like it could have been. Not natural. Let's just put it that way. Let's, let's, let's use the term as, as uh, lightly as possible. It did not seem natural to me. I mean, my goodness, if you've got machines that can create tornadoes and hurricanes, why would you even need troops until after, until the cleanup? Then you're going to need construction workers more than, more than troops. It's, uh, we live in amazing times, folks. We live in amazing times. Now, the question is, what are we going to see over the next 5, 10 years? Is the weather going to become more extreme? Is it going to continue on the, um, on the western, you know, the west coast, four corners, droughts, less snowpack, more fires, etc.? East coast continues to get pillaged and plummeted with rain and water. And what about Siberia? What about Russia? What about China? What's it like out there right now? The skies are white today. Now, I don't know if this is a combination. It's probably a combination of forest fires and nano haze. I can barely see the mountains on the horizon. But this global footprint network, I want to talk to you about this because this podcast that I did where there was a bank that was a part of some research. Now, now think about this for a minute. Do you not think that every bank out there, the big ones, you don't think they're spending big bucks wanting to know if they're going to have money continuing to come in? I mean, they want to know what their resources are and everything else so that that way they can continue their hegemonies and continue their growth. So they're going to be on it. Now, is the information going to be accurate that they give to us? That's a great question. I mean, how much truth is there in these, in these articles and the data that's presented? like the Club of Rome. I've been researching the Club of Rome and how fast the Club of Rome grew because the MFers were backing them up. It's insane how fast the Club of Rome grew. Internationally. I mean, connections in the Soviet Union and China and France and the U.S. and all over the world. 
And they're talking to politicians and scientists and, and brilliant minds and writing essays and research and making a huge impact on the planet. And they did it in a very short amount of time. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have that opportunity as well. We maybe don't have the MFers to back us up. Yet we've got our minds and our spirits and our spark of divinity within, which is far greater than any cash or empires of dirt. Neat thing about the web is we can speak our minds and talk and connect with people all over the world. I mean, there's people that listen to Leak Project from every corner of the planet. Because you know it's a pyramid, right? So, yeah. All right. Bad joke. Anyway. Ack. Oh, yeah. Somebody said that's not funny anymore. So I can't do the ack ack jokes anymore. They said I've been doing it too long and I got to stop. I'll do my best. It's hard. I mean, especially that's how I talk to Zork. And that's how, you know, I mean, we can do it telepathically as well, but I'm just saying. So let me share with you real quick. This is the Global Footprint Network Advancing the Science of Sustainability, the country trends worldwide. And I want to show you the ecological footprint versus the bio capacity. Are you ready? Will you just look at it? The red, that's not good. That's how much is being taken from the planet and how much capacity, how much it's giving back. You know, how much the, uh, the recycling efforts and all that. Do you need this research to tell you that the planet is being pillaged at an alarming rate. Deforestation. Look at the growth in the countries. Growth is good. Yes, growth is good. How about healthy growth? How about maybe some space travel opportunities? Some wormhole tech? Greg Allison's going to be on the show later today. We're going to talk about the TRAPPIST-1 system where they found seven Earth-sized planets, four of those in the habitable zone. And also we're going to talk about the FRBs, the fast radio bursts from 3 billion years ago that were sent from another galaxy that require about 5 million suns of energy to get here. Plus with all the twisting and interference that still made it here, we've been picking up multiple signals again and again, these FRBs, these fast radio bursts. Type 2 civilization, imagine a type 2 civilization 3 billion years ago. Where are they going to be at now? I mean, whoa. Especially if you can go from a type 2 to a type 3 civilization in a matter of maybe minutes. The singularity. Where are we going to be in 200 years? If we can make it through the insanity, if we can make it through the firewalls, we could be type 3 in 200 years. Think about that. We think it, we are it. Creating universes in our minds with a single synapse. Oh yeah. Very incredible to think about. Really exciting. Or, or are we going to be 1984 Orwellian meets Hellraiser pinhead style throwing the hooks out at you? Remember that part in Hellraiser 1? Like the spookiest part? The Hellraiser 1 where the, the, there's that guy, one of the bad dudes, and he's like being pulled by like these chains and it's like on his face and it's like, and, he, and, he, and he's kind of like in the cross and he's like, Jesus wept. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom! And then his, all of his limbs go all over the place and blood and guts and, and pinhead and the Cenobites like, it's kind of like that, right? Do we want that scenario? Or do we want happy, exciting opportunities where we can change the ozone with our mind? We can create planets with our mind. Why not create entire solar systems with the mind? God gave it to us. The divine spark, why not use it? The DNA is somewhat of a, as much of an amazing experience we are getting with the DNA, which is a new experience, a new opportunity. There's many firewalls in this DNA. So I think that once geneticists learn how to unlock certain firewalls, combined with the technologies, we could use it all harmoniously together. And it's beyond Terminator style. They have liquid metal right now that is programmable, liquid metal programmable that you can, you can melt and it'll come back together over and over and over and over again with the same integrity 
or virtually the same integrity that it had before it was melted and then brought back together. That's Terminator 2 right now. But it's going to be beyond that because frequencies, such as Tesla talked about, you study frequencies for a couple hundred years, you're going to know more about everything than was previously recorded with science or lack thereof. You just think it, frequency, create it. And that's one thing that I was, I was really focusing on yesterday, very deep thoughts about how, yeah, people are great. We can, we can invent things. We can make things. We create with our mind. Even when we think something, there's something created, which is great. So you understand, just by thinking something, you are creating some type of life. Yeah. Just, by, just the thought alone is creating a life form, a thought which could manifest in the physical opportunities and probably will in some form somewhere. Yet what I don't know, and if anybody does, that's a part of Godhood. How? How are we creating something with our mind by thinking it? How are we being animated? Okay, yes, Zorg, he's awesome. He's just chilling there though. Um, well, an example, my coffee cup, coffee cup right here. You could say at the molecular level, it's alive because you've got these molecules that are moving around really fast and you can break it down into frequencies and the frequencies are moving around. So it's alive in some way. I mean, there's, there's tons of life inside of this, but it's not animated. It's just, it's sitting there. I'm seeing it. My perception of it is just sitting there. And in order to hold that integrity at a molecular level, it has to be alive in some way. And it has to move in some way and stick to certain parameters. Otherwise, that coffee mug could turn into a, a puddle of goo or just, you know, a book or a shape-shifting lizard, reptilian style or something, you know, just weird, right? So what makes us unique and how do we harness that? Yes, we can do it. Yes, we can look at the data and the science and we can equate it. We can come up with all these labels and math. and Oh yeah, the X equals the Y and the Z and the P and the Q. It's all right there. But what does that mean? I mean, how? That's the beauty of divine providence. That we're, you know, if, it really, if you really break it down at the subconscious level, at least for me anyway, what I'm looking for is God is the divine. Like who, what, when, where, why is all encapsulated in the spark, how to create the spark. Does that make sense? Thank you for listening to Deep Thoughts by Rex Bear and Zorg. Be excellent to each other. Make sure to subscribe, youtube.com slash Clandestine Time Lord. If you want one of those 5G shielding Leak Project Limited Edition Tinfoil Handmade Caps, there's still some left. Got a, a few of the MK1s, which is the solid silver, the solid tinfoil. It's not real tinfoil. And then some of the MK2s, which have the yin yang symbol on the bill. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the MK2. You can see here. It's got the yin yang and this will light up in the dark. And then it's also got the removable liner, which has two fabrics that will block the lower frequencies and all the way up to 30 gigahertz, which is in the 5G range, 30 gigahertz. That's in the microwave range, that's up there. And then also, uh -oh. okay, wait, no, that's this one. This one's not for sale. This was the original prototype from Julian. You can see here, this is the original. All right. You know, it's interesting because right now I'm listening to a song called The Darkness. And this is by Daniel Deluxe, Darkness. And one of my favorite movies growing up was Legend with Tom Cruise. You know, he, he fights the devil and brings the unicorn back to life. Well, there's this one particular um, line in this song that's taken out of the movie where the devil's talking. And uh, let me see if I can, I want to read it to you exactly. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, 
Anyway, it hasn't came on yet. It just it takes a minute. But he says, those humans, they're such fragile creatures. One w- would not think that they could control the universe with their powers is pretty much what he says, the devil. And then he says to his sorcerers, his disciples, he says, find them and destroy them. Just makes me think of how great and unique we are. And no wonder if there was a being or a race out there that manipulated our DNA. Okay, here we go. Looking upon these frail creatures, one would not think that they could contain such power. One could rule the universe with it. You must find them for me and destroy them. That's the quote out of the movie Legend by the devil, by Satan. And I think it's the perfect, like the way that he's depicted is, he's like my favorite devil character. But then you can get into the whole question of is the interpretation of the devil and Satan that most of us have even accurate? And how, how solid is that data? Who's the real devil? Who's the real Satan? Is Satan just a term for adversary? And then I think of Satan and Saturn and Saturn being an adversary to the sun. And is Saturn, was Saturn at one point a sun? And this is all just stuff that goes through my mind. So it doesn't mean good or bad. It just means the opposite of the spectrum, which you need both to confirm the other side's existence. And this is also brought up in the film Legend, talking about how you must have the darkness to, to show the light. So what are your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen? Be excellent to each other. Oh, yeah. Zorg's with me. Zorg's in the house. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Zorg. There you go, buddy. Be the change the world needs to see. And that starts with you. Act, act, act.